Infrastructure as Code has made our lives easier to deploy infrastructure in any of the cloud providers. I have had some experience with CloudFormation and some Azure Arm or Bicep now, but tools like Terraform and Pulumi come really handy because they are cloud agnostic, which means you can deploy to AWS, Azure, GCP, DigitalOcean, any of the cloud provider you can think of. And if you have been following this channel, you know that I have some experience with Terraform and I've always been a Terraform person when it comes to IAC needs. But today I wanted to take a look at Pulumi just because they do things differently where you can use TypeScript slash JavaScript, C Sharp, or Python to write your IC code. So I'm gonna take Pulumi for a spin. This is kind of a first impressions video and we will try to deploy a static website using Pulumi on AWS. Before we even get started, make sure you have Pulumi installed. So for Mac and Linux, you can follow the respective instructions. Since I'm on my Windows machine right now, I'm gonna go ahead and install Pulumi by doing Choco install Pulumi since I have the chocolatey package manager. Or you can also download the MSI version of Pulumi. Okay, so I have Pulumi installed and if I just hit Pulumi, you can see we have a certain list of commands that you know we can run. So the famous one being Pulumi up, which basically is equivalent to Terraform apply which means you are deploying your resources. And there are some different settings that I see here, like stack and config, which is quite different to Terraform because I don't think there is any stack. So you can have you know, your dev and prod stacks here. So we'll figure out as we go through this video. Okay, so after we have done our install, let's keep going on with the AWS demo. So you can see on the left-hand side, getting started with Pulumi, they have one for AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and Kubernetes. So let's go to create a new project. And it asks us to create a new directory and then CD into that directory. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I created a new directory called quick start and I have changed my directory to quick start on my terminal here. And now we have to use Pulumi new and then they have AWS-Python. So let me copy that command and paste it here. So as you can see, it asked me to authenticate to my Pulumi account. I'm just gonna hit enter because that will open the sign-in page for Pulumi. So if you haven't created an account yet for Pulumi, it'll ask you to create a new account. So go through the process of creating the account and now your CLI should say that, welcome to Pulumi and it should be authenticated with your Pulumi account. So now there will be some configuration steps as per the documentation here. It says it'll ask you for a project name and project description. So let's go ahead through those prompts. So project name, quick start, let's go with that. And project description, it says a minimal AWS Python Pulumi program. Sure, I'm fine with that. And sure, I'm gonna call this dev as the stack name, you know, as I was discussing in the beginning, since I saw that Pulumi stack command, I thought, you know, you can have your different stacks for the same project. So let's go with dev. And for the AWS region, I'm fine with US East 1. You can enter whichever AWS region is your preference. That reminds me, since I'm at the AWS section, make sure you have the AWS CLI installed. And if you don't know what AWS CLI is, it's basically the command line interface for AWS, which allows you to interact with AWS cloud resources through your CLI. Make sure you have that installed and I can show you that I have it installed if I do AWS dash dash version. And just for quick reference, if I do AWS S3 space LS, it'll list all the S3 buckets that is in my account. In order to authenticate your CLI, just like we did for Pulumi, make sure you have set up an IAM account with access key and secret key and then you have authenticated your CLI. I leave the documentation or guide from AWS on how to install the CLI and authenticate your CLI. But moving forward, let's go back to our Pulumi 
section. So I'm fine with US East one, as I said, I'll hit enter. And now it'll install the dependencies and will create a virtual environment for us. A few moments later. Okay, so our new project is ready to go. So it has all the configurations that come in by default, right? And if you wanna look at what this project basically is, as per the documentation, you know, it should be an S3 bucket, as you can see here. And the next step basically is to deploy the stack. So before I do that, I'll open my project in Visual Studio Code just to look at the directory structure and what different files do we have here. So as you can see, main.py is the Palumi file that gives instru instructions on what resources should be deployed to AWS. And as you can see, the S3 bucket called my bucket is deployed here and we get an export which i think if we do palumi up which is equivalent to terraform apply once that resource is deployed it'll give this as an output which would be the bucket id and then there are a few yaml files which i think are so the plumi.yaml is basically the information about the project so the name of the project the runtime and the description that it asked for in our cli command and then plumi.dev.yaml is the stack information for dev because we call the stack dev so you can see the config is that use aws region us east one so that is the boilerplate code that plumi generated for us now if i go back to the documentation we can now deploy the stack so let's do that by typing palumi up and this is where you will get an error if you don't have the aws cli configured so go configure your aws cli i have linked down the guide and documentation from aws itself and you can see similar to terraform it asks for hey do you want to perform this update i'll go ahead and click yes and you can see it's creating two resources one of them is the palumi stack and underneath that stack we have the aws s3 bucket called my bucket so let's go ahead and say yes So the bucket name, as I said, based on the Python code, it gave us an output saying my bucket dash 458DF47 has been created. And the reason it added this random number at the end is because bucket names need to be globally unique. So that, that is great feature, I guess, because I didn't see any code in for, you know, generating a random string at the end because we named it my bucket. So that is awesome. Now, moving on with the stack here, we can also do this if you don't have any output function. So Plumi, so we can also do Plumi stack output bucket name, and that would list our bucket name but I can also use my AWS CLI by doing AWS S3 LS to see if a new bucket called my bucket 458DF47 was added. And it's right here. So there we go. It did deploy an S3 bucket. And going back to our guide here, now it'll tell us to modify the program. So basically right now it's just a bucket we wanted to deploy a static website to AWS. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can create a hello Palumi file. So let's go in our Visual Studio code and create index.html here. So index.html and this basically is a plain HTML file which has an H1 saying hello Palumi. And now we will modify our Python code to reflect that this is the asset that we want to use as our index.html file that we need to serve as a static website. So going to my main.py, I can add this right under our bucket code. So this basically is adding an object called index.html. Okay, so now we can save this and do Palumi up to deploy our changes. And you'll see that in the terminal, it'll detect that there is one to create, which means it's creating a new object, but two unchanged resources, which looks right to me. So I'm gonna go ahead, yes. Okay, so the changes have been deployed. Now the thing to note is we didn't turn on website hosting. We just uploaded an object called index.html. So I am hoping that is what we'll do next based on this documentation. So now it says update the program, update the bucket declaration to add a website property and make index.html the home page of our website. I'm gonna go ahead and add these properties to my bucket and 
And the way you do that is inside S3 bucket, we paste the block that we just copied. And now you can see that it has a website argument with an index document called index.html. And lastly, we also wanna make some adjustments to the public read access because since it'll be hosted on the web and I want people to visit this website, I'll have to make sure that it has the public read access. So this is where our access control list comes in. And here is the code that will allow our objects in this bucket to be read publicly. So let's go ahead and paste this. And we can get rid of the earlier block that uploaded the bucket object because we have that at the bottom now, right here. And you can see it depends on the public access block, which means that this part of the code is dependent on the ACL that we just created. It also tells us to change the export so that it gives us the endpoint. So we'll do that at the bottom here and paste it. So it will give us the endpoint at which the object index.html is available. So I'm gonna hit Control S and now the famous command we run again called pull me up. So it detected all of those changes and we'll go ahead and say yes and wait for those changes to be deployed. Okay, so those changes were deployed and we have a bucket endpoint right here. And if we go back to the documentation, we can now curl our bucket endpoint and it should reply with the index.html content. So let's do that. Let's curl our bucket endpoint and you can see we got hello Pulumi back. And you can also visit this in your browser. Here we have a static website that's on AWS S3 that we deployed using Pulumi as the IEC tool. And that was basically my first impressions on Pulumi and feel like it's, you know, since I know Python, it's a lot easier to grasp, um, but you can try it out in TypeScript slash JavaScript or C Sharp or Go, let me know if you build something with Pulumi. But I wanted to point out that if you're looking for a bit more advanced tutorial on how to have your own portfolio or your own static website deployed, I did write a blog post and I continued this demo basically. So I'm just gonna show you what I did. I have this terminal portfolio website that I created two years ago on GitHub. And I basically took the tutorial here and went a step further by deploying my terminal portfolio using Pulumi to AWS. So you can go through this blog post that's available on blog.reshubkumar.com. But I've, if I go down to the bottom, you know, we did a hello world here. And for the, the only thing that I changed is I copied or cloned the terminal portfolio repo inside my Pulumi project and used Pulumi config and set the path to that terminal portfolio. And then just did Pulumi up, which basically gives us this cool terminal website that I built two years ago. And this blog post also uses CloudFront as a content delivery network. It has its own advantages like cache and you can have your custom domain pointing to your CloudFront distribution along with an SSL certificate. So if I open this CloudFront distribution link, this is the website that I was talking about and this was deployed by Pulumi. So yeah, go check out that blog post if you want to continue this tutorial. I hope you find this video helpful helpful. And if you want more DevOps and cloud related content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit a like if you like this demo. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.